Pete Sampson with Tim O'Malley with Instant Analysis following Brian Kelly's USC Tuesday press conference. And a little bit of news I asked directly about Greer Martini. Brian Kelly said he's you know, a little questionable this week of the knee injury. I think it's probably safe to assume he won't go against the Trojans, which forces Tavon Coney to log a lot more snaps and Niles Morgan to play even more than he already has. But other than that, I mean, there's not a ton of news today other than I think something that we speculated about on our podcast yesterday or, or Monday, yeah, Monday, about Kevin Stefferson's role maybe starting to increase. Yeah, I think it's it was an interesting point he made that it was kind of like preseason camp for Stefferson trying to get out there against Miami and North Carolina, and that's preseason camp with two different quarterbacks. You really probably shouldn't have expected him to do much, but they need it now. I think, Pete, you mentioned it about three or four weeks ago. If you get Stefferson back involved and he has – two 40-yard catches and a touchdown this year along the way. That's going to be a good second half for Kevin Stefferson, and they could really use one of those in the next two games. Yeah, there's no question because I, I think the speed that Notre Dame needs to throw out against USC at wide receiver, it, there's sort of a, a juxtaposition against the speed that USC is going to throw out that we know for sure. It's a question for Notre Dame. It's a certainty for USC with Tyler Vaughn's, uh, Deontay Burnett, I think even Steven Mitchell in the slot is a quick, even if he's not a fast player. And I, that's why I asked Brian Kelly a little bit. You know, the safeties, I think, for the most part, have been a pleasant surprise so far this year. This might be a weekend where they get exposed a little bit. Um, they certainly are not going to be able to protect them, I think, in the way that they have over the first six weeks of the year. And they don't have to be the best players on the yeah. field either. They just have to hold up. There's going to be some missed tackles in space, but the next guy's got to be there. There's going to be – and I think Brian Kelly's been pretty frank about, look, we don't even ask them to come down and make a tackle eight yards downfield at the second level because if they have to do that against NFL backs, they're going to have trouble. Well, they have an NFL back coming mm -hmm. in. It's really up to the front seven to win this game. I think something we talked about in the podcast – the corners are good. They, there's occasionally corners get beat. You mentioned it's a 50-50 ball because sometimes you're going to lose it. Right. The corners have to have a very good game because they're capable of raising their level of play, I think. I think the safeties, if they can maintain, would be key for this week. You know, on Brandon Wimbush, a lot of questions about him. 100% healthy, going to start no question there. I, you know, it's going to be an interesting matchup for him. You know, We talked about Notre Dame secondary, USC secondary. Five-star guys all over the place, maybe not playing like that yeah. so far, but there's always the opportunity that's going to click or uh, the danger, I think, for Notre Dame's perspective that it could click with Iman Marshall, Jack Jones, Marvell Tell, uh, Chris Hawkins. I mean, that is a unbelievably talented group. And I think at some point on Saturday night, Brandon Wimbush is going to have to make a play to either keep a drive alive or win the game. Um, I'm very curious to see how Wimbush responds this week, and we'll talk to him on Wednesday night when he comes in post-practice. Yeah, I think it's easy to say that Brandon Wimbush can have a good game passing if Notre Dame runs the ball well, but you're right, at some point in a close game, you're going to have to move the ball on third down on third and seven with your arm, maybe buying time but using your arm. And I think the key to that is that Alizé Mack continues his ascent because he's a guy that can win the matchups one-on-one -on -one matchups that Wimbush is getting a little bit of trust in Alizé mm -hmm. Mack. We talk about St. Brown. That St. Brown's going to be a, a, a fun to watch on the outside, but I think Alizé Mack's the guy where Notre Dame could have an advantage in those matchups. Yeah, no question. Well, that's it for our Tuesday Instant Analysis post-Brian Kelly press conference. We'll be out here all week covering our player access tomorrow night, Brian Kelly again Thursday, and then, of course, Saturday, the big game, Notre Dame-USC and Notre Dame Stadium.